Welcome to part three of my video series, exploring the Mac Pro 6.1 trash can and whether it makes sense for professional users to buy this computer in 2020. In our previous episodes, we got a base model Mac Pro trash can. We took it apart and installed a 12 core CPU and 64 gigabytes of RAM. So now it's time to put this Mac to the test with a series of benchmarks. I really wanna see how this Mac compares to more modern offerings from Apple. So alongside the trash can, I'm also gonna run the same benchmarks on two different iMacs. They're both 27 inch 5K iMacs. One has a quad core i5 and R580 graphics, and the other one has the eight core i9 and Vega 48 graphics. Both iMacs have 40 gigs of RAM. Now I've chosen these models for a reason. Buying a base model trash can used, along with the upgrades, is going to cost somewhere between a thousand pounds and 1500 pounds depending on how good a deal you can get. But for that price, you could buy one of those i5 iMacs. The great benefit with an iMac is that 5K display. And if you had to go and buy an equivalent 5K monitor to go with your trash can, then the combined price will push you a lot closer to the price of that i9 iMac. The i9 iMac is the most powerful non-pro desktop machine that Apple offers. So I think for that reason too, it's a useful comparison. And of course, I have access to these two iMacs, so that's a good reason for using them. Uh, but I will also research benchmark figures online, and if I can find reliable sources for any of the other Apple machines, I will include those in the results. So here are the benchmark tests that we're gonna run. First of all, it's Cinebench. This is a cross-platform rendering test that gives an indication of the CPU performance of the machine. And there are lots of published Cinebench results, so it'll be easy to see how the Mac Pro 6.1 compares to other Macs. Next up will be Blender, the open source 3D modeling program. And we've got two different scenes that we'll use to render. We've got the BMW and the classroom scene. Uh, these are demo scenes that are available from Blender and they're very popular with testers on YouTube. The third test that we'll do is the Blackmagic Design raw speed test. And this is a performance measurement that works with Mac OS and it tests both the CPU and the GPU performance when decoding Blackmagic raw video files. And finally, we're gonna use Blackmagic again, but this time their disk speed test. And this will just help us to see how the internal SSD of the Mac Pro performs compared to newer offerings. Now we did CPU benchmarking using Geekbench 5 in the previous episodes. So we won't do that again, but we will come back to Geekbench at the end because there's an interesting conclusion. So let's start the test. Now on the left-hand side of the screen, we've got the iMac 5K 2019 model. This has got the Core i9, 9900K, Vega 48 GPU, and 40 gigabytes of RAM. The Core i9 is an eight core, 16 thread CPU. On the right hand side of the screen, it's the iMac 5K 2017 model. This has the Core i5, 7600K, the Radeon Pro 580 GPU, and 40 gigabytes of RAM. The Core i5 is a four core, four thread CPU. Although for some reason it's shown as a two core, four thread CPU in Cinebench. And then in the middle, it's our Mac Pro trash can with its Xeon E5 2697 version two, dual Fire Pro D300 GPUs and 64 gigabytes of RAM. The Xeon is a 12 core, 24 thread CPU. Well, no surprise with the finishing order. The i9 iMac wins with a score of 4,007 points and managed to finish the test in one minute, 13 seconds. But second place and not too far behind is the Mac Pro, scoring 3,229 points and finishing in one minute, 30 seconds. Last place is that i5 iMac with just 1,623 points and it took two minutes, 59 seconds to complete. Now from the online research that I've done, I can also fit in some other Apple models here. Uh, starting with the Mac Pro 5,1, the older generation cheese grater. Now the 12 core version actually scores slightly higher than the trash can at 3,412. Now the new Mac Pro, the entry level 2019 version with the eight core processor scores 3,663. And that's not a huge amount more than the Mac Pro trash can. And it's less than the i9 iMac. 
Considering the astronomical price of entry, I think I'd be pretty disappointed to learn that. Though of course, with that new Mac Pro, your upgrade options are considerably greater. Now I also want to mention the 16-inch MacBook Pro, the 8-core model, which scores 3,281. And the entry-level iMac Pro with the 8-core Xeon manages 3,772. So that does outperform that entry-level 2019 Mac Pro. But it's not as good as the i9 iMac, which costs about two-thirds as much. And for those of you interested in how the Mac Mini does, well, the 2019 version with the 6-core CPU comes in at 2,191. Now, before you run away thinking that the older 5,1 is much faster, just bear in mind that this is only one test. If we did a Geekbench 5 test, which includes a much wider variety of stress testing, the trash can actually scores considerably higher. But as we said in part one, the 5,1 is still a fantastic machine. So let's move on to the Blender renders. And first we're gonna do the BMW scene. Bear in mind, when we're rendering here, we're just using the CPU. There's no GPU input in these render times. And it's the same finishing order. The i9 iMac comes in first at three minutes, seven seconds with the trash can running 37 seconds behind with a total of three minutes, 44 seconds. And the i5 iMac finished in seven minutes, 31 seconds. No real surprises there, but let's try the classroom render, which is a much more detailed scene and takes a bit longer to do. Now this time, the i9 iMac rendered in 9 minutes 21 seconds, and the trash can crossed the line after 11 minutes and 25 seconds. That poor old i5 labours to a finish at 24 minutes. Now of course, all of these CPU benchmarks that we've done have been multi-threaded. In other words, they've utilised all of the processor cores. I'm not doing single core benchmarks because it's not going to tell us anything. The Mac Pro 6,1 is never going to match a more recent machine with a latest generation CPU for single core performance. And bear in mind, this is a Mac Pro with a Xeon CPU. It's built for multi-core professional applications. So with that in mind, let's move on to the Blackmagic RAW speed test. Now starting with the CPU scores, we can see that it really confirms the picture of CPU performance we've already seen from the previous tests. But when we look at GPU performance, there's an interesting twist. The trash can turns out to be the fastest. Those dual D300 GPUs are clearly very well optimized for this particular workflow. In fact, even the R580 outperforms the Vega 48 in a couple of areas. Now, obviously in real world performance, the Vega 48 will outperform the other cards, but it does show that the dual D300s do still have something to offer when it comes to video workloads. Now finally, let's have a look at disk speed, because data I.O. is a classic bottleneck. You can have the fastest CPU and graphics card in the world, but if your hard disk runs like a snail, then the whole system is going to slow down as well. Now the three computers that we've got make for an interesting comparison here. The Mac Pro and the i9 iMac both have SSD storage, but there is six, seven years between those generations. The i5 iMac has a two terabyte fusion drive, so this is a conventional spinning hard disk with an SSD attached. You can't access the SSD directly, the operating system uh, controls it by moving frequently accessed files into that area to give you better performance. Now in the real world, it feels very fast, like an SSD, until you have a data heavy workload like video editing, and then it quickly hits the limits and slows down. To do the test, we're going to choose a five gigabyte stress test. And for the two SSD equipped computers, we'll take the average of three runs. But for the Fusion Drive, we'll take the average of five runs because this is gonna better show how the performance degrades under sustained activity. So let's get started with the test. Now our i9 iMac has the latest SSD tech, so it's no surprise that it rockets along, averaging 1,852 megabytes per second on write and 2,208 megabytes per second on read. That's fast. The trash can by comparison manages 775 megabytes per second on write and 859 megabytes per second on read. 
And then we have the i5 iMac with its Fusion Drive, which averages 262 megabytes per second on write performance. And that makes sense since it'll always be writing to the spinning disk. But on read performance, it starts to take advantage of that hybrid SSD, and that makes things much quicker, at times boosting over 2000 megabytes per second. But on average, we come to 1023 megabytes per second. So just as an aside, Fusion drives are probably best suited to non-pro applications. But I have to say that the figures don't really reflect the way that they feel in real-world usage. I tend to use my internal drive as data storage, and I use external SSDs to edit video. So for me, I find that the system runs very quickly. Now the internal SSD in the trash can, whilst it is slower than the latest drives, is still a good deal faster than those external SSDs I just mentioned. So in day-to-day -day use, I'm not sure you'd ever think that the disk performance isn't good enough. And it may be too that we could get some better speeds by installing a newer NVMe drive. And I haven't ruled out doing that. Uh, if I do that upgrade, I'll certainly make a video about it. Now to conclude, I wanted to show the Geekbench 5 league table for Apple computers. So this is an average of all of the submitted results for different Apple computers. And this really confirms what we found out in our testing. And that is that the 12 core Mac Pro 6.1 trash can is only bettered by newer Pro machines, with the exception of the i9 iMac. It even outperforms the 16 inch MacBook Pro for multi-core performance. Obviously for single core, it's some way behind. And that will have an impact on how the Mac feels to use every day. But that impact is very difficult to scientifically define or measure. I've been using the trash cam as my daily driver for a few weeks now, and in the next part I'm going to try to show what's good about it and what's not so good from that perspective of how does it feel. But I'm also going to do some more performance testing, this time using tasks in software applications. We'll do some editing in Final Cut Pro. Um, we'll try Logic Pro as well for all of you audio fans and see how it performs, and maybe a little bit of photo editing type work. And hopefully that'll get us a more rounded feel for the value of the Mac Pro 6.1 trash can under these different workloads. In a future episode, I'm also going to rerun some of these tests and assess the thermal performance and the noise generated by the trash can. But before we go, I've got an interesting observation. The more eagle-eyed amongst you might have spotted that the average performance figure for the 12 core Mac Pro on that Geekbench 5 league table is 7,120. Yet my Mac Pro scored 7,444. Now what's the reason for this? Well, it's certainly true that there's some variation in performance of CPUs. Even if they're the identical model, there'll be a, a slight difference. And that's just a byproduct of the manufacturing process. Those variations are normal, but they wouldn't account for a difference of this size. Could it be that it's because the CPUs are old? Geekbench 5 is a fairly recent benchmark, so the machines that are being tested here are perhaps six or seven years old. Does CPU performance degrade over time? Not in my experience, if you consider the CPU itself. And this is backed up, if you remember, my CPU was pulled from a working server, so it's probably been in 24 seven use for six to seven years. Thermal performance, though, does change over time. Dust builds up in the system, and that compromises the performance of the heatsink. And the thermal paste, well, that degrades. Over time, the CPU will slow down because it's running hotter. Now, remember that my CPU is recently installed, and of course, we renewed the thermal paste when we did that. So if you've got a Mac Pro 6.1 and you're not planning a CPU upgrade, you may still be able to improve performance by just taking it apart, cleaning it, and reapplying the thermal paste. Now, as some of you pointed out, I should have reapplied the thermal paste to the GPUs when I had mine open. And I'm really kicking myself for not thinking of that. So that's another job for a future episode, perhaps. And I've got lots more ideas and things that I want to test, so there's more to come on this. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel, you know what to do. And I hope you enjoyed this part of the series. Maybe I did enough to earn a thumbs up. In any case, I'll see you next time for some more geekery.